Hi everyone, my name is Hani Pezzamenti and I am an education specialist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. My talk today focuses on utilizing competence-based simulation to improve orientation outcomes. Just wanted to take a moment to shout out my co-authors, Patty Akuff, Robbie Hales, Cheryl Dominic, Akira Nishasaki, and Natalie Napolitano. Natalie's disclosures include Drager Medical, Vero Biotech, Smith's Medical, Phillips Respironics, and Actuated Medical. There are no other disclosures to report. New hires join our team of respiratory therapists with various levels of experience in education. Our new graduates receive very limited neonatal and pediatric experience. Experienced RTs that transfer to CHOP from an adult or community facility also have limited neonatal and pediatric experience. An orientation program was needed to assure all new hires received the same foundational knowledge. We developed a nine-week orientation program curriculum with simulation-based competence assessment to assure all new hires gain foundational knowledge and skills to perform pediatric clinical tasks. Each new hire individually completed simulations during the first and last week of orientation. Curriculum changes were made over a three-year time frame and were based on the performance in the simulations, as well as their on-the-job training, knowledge, and skills during and after orientation. When a new hire joins our team, they complete pre-orientation simulations. Over the next nine weeks, they begin their clinical experience with a preceptor. They also do their didactic learning classes and then complete their first competency session. From there, they move on to post-orientation simulations and complete their second competency session. Mediation occurs if necessary, and then they begin their independent clinical assignment. Our new hires complete three simulation scenarios. The first is a non-invasive ventilation patient. The second is a decompensating patient. And the third is a tracheostomy patient, only for the experienced RT, due to the fact that new graduates do not typically have a lot of experience with tracheostomies. We use a high fidelity mannequin with a simulated patient monitor. We use the same scenarios for pre and post simulations. A scenario-based checklist is scored as a percentage of total points. Full debriefing is done after the post-orientation simulation. The mitigation process includes reviewing policies and procedures, giving the orientee additional orientation time as required, or additional time with an educator to review equipment. We updated our curriculum a few times over that three-year time frame. The first timeline includes our baseline curriculum. The classes included tracheostomy, non-invasive ventilation, asthma, and equipment. Our pre and post simulations were also done at the beginning of our baseline. Timeline two is where we introduced our weighted checklist, where critical elements were worth more points on the checklist. In timeline three, we introduced a simulation video that all new hires viewed. Timeline four introduced new weekly didactic classes, and we created a new simulation workshop. We had 90 new hires complete our program. Only 16% of the new hires required some form of mitigation. 67% of our new hires successfully moved on to ICU orientation. All of our new hires improved their scores between pre and post simulations in all time periods. The use of a competence-based simulation program greatly impacted our hospital. It allowed continuous examination of the orientation program. 
it assisted with readiness evaluation for orientation completion. And it created successful advancement of new hires to ICU orientation. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. At this time, I would like to open it up to your questions. Thank you.